together. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging seas. Our God, He holds a victory. There's joy. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet We shout out your praise There's joy in the house of the Lord Our God is surely in this place And we won't be quiet We shout out your praise We shout out His praise Forever We sing to the God who heals We sing to the God who heals we sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause He hung up on that cross, then He rose up from that grave. My God still rolling songs away. There's joy. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout. Forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace Let the house of the Lord sing praise Come on, sing it louder! We were the beggars! We were the beggars Now we're on your team We were the prisoners And now we're running free We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace Let the house of the Lord We 
We are a city on a hill that can never be hidden You can come here in chains, but You walk out in freedom So come find your place In the city of grace All who are burdened Desperate and Thing here this morning. What do you do 
I I'm not talking about how do you do, and I'm not talking about what you do for fun, not you do what you do for work, or, or not even Abba's song. Remember the song? I love you, I do, I do, I do. That's why I don't sing. Hey, welcome here this morning. Good to see. You. I'm glad you're part of uh, of this service here this morning. And I, I wanna I wanna ask you, what do you do? Not so much as far as work and so forth, but what do you do when you see garbage laying around? What do you do when you see somebody that is that is cars broken down, run out of gas, they're pushing their car down the road? What do you do when you d see a panhandler out on the street with a sign that says hungry, anything can help? Or, or a child crying in the store when they don't see their mother? What do you do? When you see an opportunity that jumps in front of you, something you can do to serve. Do you do something or do you say, yeah, you know what, that's somebody else's responsibility. See, we've been called to do something. I love what uh, David Thorpe, an author and speaker, who was best described or is best described as a champion for social good. What he said, he says this, we all have a place in our brain that is activated by altruism. Altruism is the principle or practice of, of being unselfishly concerned for others and doing something about that. He says we all have this, this thing in our brain or that motivates us to do good for others. See, here's the thing. There's a level of satisfaction that comes into our lives when we actually do something to help somebody else out, when we actually serve. He goes on to say one of the treatments for depression would be so, uh, some sort of service Service that would get you out of your own head a little bit and focused on others. So here's the thing, we have been called to serve and in, in uh, our, our time together we have been talking about, as we've been looking at the vision of the church, we've been talking about the importance of loving God or loving Christ. We talked about the importance of equipping our people, equipping each other and today we want to talk about serving, serving the community around us. Let me jump to a portion of scripture that's found in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 8 to 11. 1 Peter 4, 8 to 11. This is what it says. Above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sin. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of what you should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very word of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that we've had this opportunity in the last few weeks to look at the importance of vision, of the importance of, of, of focusing on the things that you want from us, where you want us to go. And as we look at this portion and how that applies to us serving the community around us, would you speak clearly through your word here this morning is my prayer in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. When it comes to serving others, it's got to start with the simple word called agape or agape is an unconditional love listen it's got to start there folks it's got to start with you loving he says in verse 8 above all love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sin now peter is talking about loving other believers here and the importance of showing love and compassion to those within the community and and he says above everything else above all you say above all you do above all that you you are. He says, listen, you got to love. You got to love with a deep, intense love. Actually, the King James Version says, you got to love with a fervent love, which means intense, enthusiastic. It means hot. It means burning. Okay, when I think about that, I'm thinking about not just my love for my wife who is, she's hot and, and all that stuff. No, I, I mean having an intense, deep concern and love for others around us. The word picture here is of an athlete straining to reach the goal. It, it, it speaks of being eager. It speaks of intensity. See, Christian love is something we we have to work at. It, it, it just... It, 
it, it just it's something that doesn't come like that like a, like an athlete needs to work at developing his muscles so that he can be effective in in whatever game he is in so that we have to develop this thing called love and hey listen it's not just about an emotional feeling we've talked about this many times though I, it does include emotions but it's about a dedication and sincerity if you want to do something for someone out of a sense of duty, not out of a sense of love, you're going to be found out really, really fast. I, I, I dare you to try to do something out of a sense of duty when it comes to doing something for a child or for a teen. Man, they're going to see right through you. They're pretty smart. In those areas anyways, maybe not in so many other areas, but certainly in those areas, they can, they can smell you out real quick when you're doing something out of a sense of duty or when you're doing it out of a sense of love. Can I encourage you, love, love deeply when it comes to serving. Start with that. He says here, because love covers over a multitude of of sin. Ask God to help you love people around you. And, and there may be people that may be hard and you're saying, Wes, you've got no idea how difficult it is to love my neighbor. I mean, it's easier to love a flock of mosquitoes than to love this guy or this woman. And I'm saying, man, if that's the case, then maybe you need to ask God to fill you with more love so that you can, in fact, show kindness to the persons around you, even to those that you want to lash out at. And, you know, you may have, you may have uh, the neighbor's cat coming into your garden and, and leaving little treasures there for you. And you're like, ah! Love covers a multitude of sin. It keeps you from doing something to that cat or doing something that you shouldn't say or shouldn't do. Remember Colossians chapter 3, verse 14. He says, oh, Above all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. See, love has to be the predominant factor in our lives as we reach out to people around us. Can, can I give you some practical things you can do to truly show love? I, I found this on a, on a website called uh, Lifeway Research. I'm just going to give you seven real quick practical ways to show love even to those that are hard, hard to love. Number one, pray for them by name. <laughs> Get to know them by their name, first of all, your neighbors or whomever, and then pray for them. It starts with us having the right attitude. Secondly, stop and say hello. You know, I can tell you, if we were just to take some time to get to know a person and develop that at least a little bit of a communication, it would go a long way. Meet a tangible need. It could mean something like helping your neighbor with, with some weeding or mowing their lawn or taking out their garbage or whatever. Just, just be there to help in a tangible way. By the way, can I just say that we have a, a family here in the church, a refugee family here in the church that needs someone to watch their children on February 21st at 3 p.m. If you want to look for something that you can do to help, please call the office. We could surely use some help there. Number four, give a heart holiday gift. Listen, February 14th is coming up. It's coming up pretty quick. And I wonder what it would be like if you went and bought a bunch of carnations and you were just to give them to neighbors around your, your house. I, I wonder what kind of a, a message that would send to them that you actually care. Hey, tr maybe number five, try throwing a party in your yard. Maybe to do something to invite your neighbors. Obviously now in the rain, it's not the best idea, but maybe planning for something like that. How about inviting them to church or to one of our socials, one of our small groups? Invite them out. Get, hey, get beyond your fear and invite them out. Or number seven, share the gospel. You know, I, I, I can't express how much, how important this is to be willing to share the gospel to, with them. Get them on Right Now Media. Yeah, or, or something like that. Some very practical things you can do to show love. But it's got to start with loving them if, if we are to, to reach out and love our community. Secondly, what we've got to do when we want to serve a community is we've got to accommodate. In other words, invite them into our lives. Verse 9 says, offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. To hospitality. Hospitality is one who is given to generous, welcoming, and cordial reception of visitors, guests, or strangers. It means to be practically practical in our help to anyone who is in 
in need, if it's a, if it's a, a, a friend or a stranger, a believer or unbeliever. See, in that time, hospitality was incredibly important for, for Christians. And you had to, well, it wasn't just Christians, just for people in general. See, because back in those days, they didn't have a Holiday Inn or they didn't have a Hotel California. Well, probably not a good description of Hotel California, but they didn't have a, a wonderful uh, inns that these people could go to. Actually, the inns or the hotels or whatever you want to call them in that time, they weren't very nice. They were actually somewhat nasty. They were filthy. They were incredibly expensive and usually had a terrible reputation. And they even had fleas. You know, it's funny. I was reading uh, some information about hotels or the inns at that time. And Plato spoke of, the of an innkeeper or innkeepers holding travelers for ransom. <laughs> they, they, they were compared to pirates that would grab people and keep them until somebody would pay up. And so it wasn't the kind of place that you wanted to go to. So they depended on others to show hospitality, to bring them in and to allow them to sleep at their house. Can you imagine if we did that today? Uh, it's funny, Paul says here, offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. You ever been there? Somebody has come to your house and uh, they've overstayed their welcome and you're like, oh, I wish you would go, right? You know, some, and some need to be kind of pushed out the door. I mean, honestly, it's bedtime. It's, it's 10 o'clock and what are they still doing here, right? You, you understand what I'm saying? Well, you know, hospitality can be very inconvenient and it can sometimes be annoying. You have a family over, they have kids. The kids are, are well, they're, they're, just, they're just like chalkboard, you know, nails down the chalkboard, they're driving you crazy. It is, it is times like that you have to say, God, give me strength and help me to, to be accommodating. It, it's so important that we understand the importance of hospitality. One writer, Erwin Lutzer, said this, hospitality is a test for godliness because those who are selfish do not like strangers, especially needy ones, to intrude upon their private lives. They prefer their own friends who share their lifestyle. Only the humble have the necessary resources to give themselves to those who could never give of themselves in return. See, we have to be willing to show kindness to our community by welcoming them in. And you never know. I love what Hebrews says. Hebrews 13 verse 2, it says, Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, some people have entertained angels without knowing it. Can you imagine if you opened your door to someone and you brought them in and you had a little bit of a conversation and you didn't realize they were actually an angel? Certainly this happened in Bible times when the three angels visited Abraham. But I wonder how many times it has happened today as well. Folks, we need to be hospitable. Thomas Fuller once said, hospitality is threefold. For one's family, this is necessary. For strangers, this is courtesy. For the, for the poor, this is charity. Let's connect with our community through agape, through being accommodating, and lastly, by applying our gifts and abilities. Verse 10 says this, each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve one another faithfully, administering God's grace in various forms. If anyone is speaking and so for you, you can read the rest there. See, if you love you, you will serve. Listen, we, we all have at least one spiritual gift. We need to use them to honor God and the building up of the church. You are a steward. Steward means that you're not an owner, but you're a manager of what God has given you. We're going to talk more about that as we get into February, and we're going to talk a little bit about stewardship. He has given us gifts and abilities, and he expects them to expects us to use them. Michelle has bought me a number of jackets. Actually, she hasn't bought me just one jacket. I think I got like five jackets. And I, I got to tell you, um, don't tell her this, but some of them are, are, are still hanging in the closet. And, uh, you know, 
I don't think she wants to see them hanging on in the closet. She wants to see them hanging on me. And someone gives you something. They want you to use it. God gives us gifts, not to hang them in a in a place that is no where nobody can can see it, but to use them to honor him and to build up the church. And he mentions a couple of gifts here in, in this portion of gifts of, uh, of, of scripture. He talks about speaking gifts and he talks about serving gifts. And both are important to the church. He talks about speaking. If anyone speaks, he should do it as speaking the very word of God. Now, you may know some people that have the gift of gab. And you're like, oh my God, nah, I heard enough. Or, or you know, you, others that have the, the, uh, uh, the ability to speak and to preach and so forth. See, we can't all be pastors and speakers. Thank the Lord for that. Though we can all be witnesses for Jesus. Speaking is using this muscle, <laughs> hair, in, in our chops for good. It's encouraging people. It's, it's having conversation with, with people that need to, to hear a little bit of, a, of, of encouragement and so forth. Hey, listen, if, if, if you want to use that gift, come and talk to me. I'm going back to our, our, our or refugees, they would love to sit down and just have some conversational English with, with you. Talk to your neighbors. See, listen, the, the words you share may be the very word God wants them to hear. The words that will encourage and challenge them in a positive way. The word, and most important, share the word of God. Share the good news, the, the gospel. Engage in speaking. And secondly, engage in serving. Uh, Peter says here, if anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides. Okay, let me remind you what serving means. Serving is render or assist or help by performing certain duties, often of a humble or menial nature. Serving means such doing things that are maybe mundane, as like waiting on tables or caring for household needs, activities without apparent dignity. In other words, I'm going to do whatever it takes to serve someone else and I'm going to do it with an open, uh, gracious heart. I remember here at the church uh, a number of years ago, we had a, we had a flood in the church and, and we had one of the toilets, the whole burst off and we had water all over our offices and we had a guest coming out that that day a guest from district office who I, I highly respect and uh, he saw the water he grabbed a broom and a mop and he was in there he was he was cleaning up the stuff and I'm thinking why would you be doing this tell you why because he had a heart of service can I can I encourage you be willing to to serve. Take time for those and, and do things for those that can't do it for themselves. We, we need people to serve. In the church, there is usually 20% of the people are doing 80% of the work. And I think that's incredibly sad. You are important. You have gifting and God wants you to be involved, but not just here in the church, but in your community, doing things to bless and to serve your community in a positive way. And I want to encourage you. What Paul says here is, is that if, 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 if we have if we have this ability, we need to serve one another. One author says, if, if believers serve in their own strength or alone, or in the strength to look good to others, they will begin to find serving a wearisome task. But to serve God with God's strength is to be able to go above and beyond and to do so much more for one purpose, that God will be given glory in everything we do through Jesus Christ. In other words, don't do it in your own strength. Ask God to give you the strength to serve one another. I love what, what uh, Paul says in Galatians chapter 5, verses 13. He says, the entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's all summed up by saying, let's show love. Let's do something for someone else. He goes in Galatians chapter 6, verse 2, Paul goes on to say, carry each other's burden. And this, in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. 
Paul and, and, and Paul is giving you this message, a message from Jesus that says, you, you got to carry burdens of people in your community. What are some of the burdens you can carry? Well, maybe physical burdens or that, that you can help uh, somebody carry. Maybe uh, they're, they're going through some challenges and you can be there and praying with them as they maybe are going through some physical problem. Maybe there are literal burdens that they need help with. Maybe carrying their groceries or, or something like that or helping somebody move. Man, I've done a lot of that, <laughs> helping people move, but doing something uh, significant, maybe uh, other kinds of physical help, raking leaves, cooking meals, cleaning, maybe helping somebody with their vehicle or so forth. Maybe you can help your neighbor with financial burdens. Now, this can be tricky and you have to be very, very careful, but maybe could you help someone that is in a need and, and maybe Maybe not so much giving them money, but maybe helping them buy some groceries or something like that. Maybe we can help by, by allowing somebody to use something of ours. Uh, maybe uh, maybe using your car or when we had snow, using your snow blower or whatever it is, but, but helping someone out. Maybe the burden for caring for someone. Uh, again, I go back to our refugees, taking care of their kids when they have to do a, uh, go out on, a, on, on an errand of some sort, caring for elderly parents or disabled people. Maybe emotional and spiritual burdens. Now, obviously, there's lots more that you can do. It's not an exhaustive list that I've given you. But the point is, God is calling us to serve, to serve our community. I'm wondering, how are you doing with serving people around you? How, how does that look like in your, in your life? We have talked here in the last three weeks about our vision for the church. We, we, we got to love Jesus above and beyond anything else. We got to equip our people, but we got to serve our community. And here's my challenge as I close here this morning. My challenge is, can you pray that God would help you to live this out? Can you pray that God would give you the strength to, to be the best child of God possible. You know what I think? If we lived out those three very simple principles that we have in our vision, to love Jesus, to equip each other, to serve our community, I, I think our lives would take on a, a different kind of level. We would have such an exciting relationship with Jesus, and we would certainly make a greater impact in the community around us. Father, as we've looked at this portion here today, as we examined what, what you have to say to us through your word, I pray, Lord, in your precious holy name, that we wouldn't just be hearers of this word, but we would put it into place. We would act upon it. Father, that we would look for opportunities to serve those in our community in some tangible way. Father, give us those opportunities, place them in front of us, help us to walk into them, help us to grab them, and help us to, to do that which you want us to do, those opportunities, so that we can make a difference in the lives of people around us. So I pray blessing on those that are listening to me here today. I pray guidance, I pray strength, I pray encouragement. I pray, Father God, you would help us to live out this vision in a very practical and everyday way, I pray in your name. Amen, amen. Thanks again, thanks again so much. Hey, listen, I'm really excited. Next week, if you can be here, next week we are actually uh, taking some time to, to celebrate International Sunday. We're going to have some, some guests here that are going to come out. Love to see you be part of that. In the meantime, I wish you God's very best for this week. Continue to serve Him. Continue to focus on Him. And let's just trust that God is going to do some great things in your and my life. Thank you so much. God bless you.